Good morning, Year 2. For Wednesday's English learning, we're going to carry on reading Fantastic Mr Fox. Now, yesterday you wrote predictions on what happened, what was going to happen in the end of Chapter 3. So let's read the rest. Now, you might have already read it, but we're going to read it together and see whether your predictions were correct. Okay, so we got up to the part where it said, Great heavens, it was the barrel of a gun. Great heavens, it was a barrel of a gun. Quick as a whip, Mr Fox jumped back into his hole. And at that same instant, the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang. The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air. Boggis and Bunce and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole, and there on the ground, in the circle, in the circle of light, half in, half out of the hole, lay the poor, tattered, blood-stained remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. We've got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing the thing away. Dang and blast, said Boggis. We shot too late. We should have let the f we should have let fly the moment he poked his head out. He won't be poking it out again in a hurry, Bunce said. Why do you think he wouldn't be poking his head out of that hole in a hurry? Again, Miss Fox wouldn't. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. Then he said, it'll take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. I'm not sitting around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ah, said Boggess, now you're talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down that hole, Bunce said. Then we'll have the lot, said Bean. Get the shovels. Okay, so they're planning to dig Mr Fox and his family out of their hole. Just remind your grown-ups, why do the farmers not like Mr Fox? What is it that Mr Fox does that means that the farmers don't like him? Okay, chapter four, the terrible shovels. Down in the hole, Mrs. Fox was tenderly licking the stump of Mr. Fox's tail to stop the bleeding. It was the finest tail for miles around, she said between licks. It hurts, said Mr. Fox. I know it does, sweetheart, but it'll soon get better. And it'll soon grow again, Dad, said one of the small foxes. It will never grow again, said Mr. Fox. I shall be tailless for the rest of my life. He looked very glum. Glum means really sad. He looks really miserable. There was no food for the foxes that night, and soon the children dozed off. Then Mrs. Fox dozed off. But Mr. Fox couldn't sleep because of the pain of his, uh, the, in the stump of his tail. Well, he thought, I suppose I'm lucky to be alive at all. And now they've found our hole, they, we're going to have to move out as soon as possible. We'll never get any peace if we... What was that? He turned his head sharply and listened. The noise he heard now was the most frightening noise a fox can ever hear. The scrape, scrape, scraping of shovels digging into the soil. Wake up, he shouted. They're digging us out. Mrs. Fox was wide awake in one second. She sat up, quivering all over. That means she's shaking all over. Are you sure that's what it is? She whispered. I'm positive. Listen. They'll kill my children, cried Mrs. Fox. Never, said Mr. Fox. But darling, they will, sobbed Mrs. Fox. You know they will. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch went the shovels above their heads. Small stones and bits of earth began falling from the roof of the tunnel. How will they kill us, Mummy? asked one of the small foxes. His round black eyes were huge with fright. Will they be dogs? he said. Mrs. Fox began to cry. She gathered her four children close to her and held them tight. Suddenly, there was an especially loud crunch above their heads and the sharp end of a shovel came right through the ceiling. That's what it looks like. Those are the shovels up there, and the little foxes, Mr. Fox and Mrs. Fox. The sight of this awful thing seemed to have an electric effect upon Mr. Fox. He jumped up and shouted, I've got it! Come on, not a moment to lose! Why didn't I think of it before? Think of what, Dad? A fox can dig quicker than any man, shouted Mr. Fox, beginning to dig. Nobody in the world can dig as quick as a fox. The soil began to fly out furiously behind Mr. Fox as he started to dig for dear life with his front feet. Mrs. Fox ran forward to help him. So did the four children. Go downwards, ordered Mr. Fox. We've got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can. The tunnel began to grow longer and longer. It slowly steep, sleep, it sloped steeply downward. Deeper and deeper below the surface of the ground it went. The mother and father and all four of the children were digging together. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them. And gradually the scrunching and scraping of the shovels became fainter and fainter. After about an hour, Mr. Fox stopped digging. Hold it, he said. They all stopped. They turned and looked back up the long tunnel they had just dug. 
all was quiet. Phew, said Mr. Fox. I think we've done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done, everyone. They all sat down, panting for breath, and Mrs. Fox said to her children, I should like you to know that if it wasn't for your father, we should all be dead by now. Your father is a fantastic fox. Mr. Fox looked at his wife and, he, and she smiled. He loved her more than ever when she said things like that. So those are the four foxes digging. Okay, we're just going to go on to reading chapter five as well. So chapter five is called The Terrible Tractors. As the sun rose the next morning, Boggis and Bunce and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could have put a house into it, but they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and cross. Dang and blast, said Boggis. Whose rotten idea was this? Bean's idea, said Bunce. Boggis and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of the cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily. I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in till I've strung him up over my porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat boggus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, You got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. He didn't even, he never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck, wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. It made him deaf. That's why you, you're not able to hear. Speak louder, he said to Bunce, and Bunce shouted back, Got any more stupid ideas? Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming up there and it itched. What we need on this job, he said, is machines. Mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. Now mechanical is where something's operated by a machine. Okay. So they want they want uh, shovels that they don't have to physically dig because they can't dig as fast as the foxes. This was a pretty good idea and the other two had to admit it. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Boggus, you stay here and see the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I will go and fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick. The long thin beam walked away. The tiny bunce trotted after him. The fat bogger stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one, bunce the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous looking monsters. They were murderous brutal looking monsters. Here we go then, shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were sent flying and trees were falling. The noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the fox crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes, our tunnel's getting shorter, I can see daylight. They all looked round and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now. And in the circle of daylight beyond, they could see the two huge black tractors almost on top of them. Tractors, shouted Mr Fox, and mechanical shovels. Dig for your lives, dig, dig, dig. Let's stop there. So these are the mechanical shovels. Shovels. So there's tractors, and then they've got mechanical shovels. So they'll grab all the ground and then move it out of the way quickly. Okay. So they'll dig it up. Right. So what you're going to do for your activity today is you are going to write a diary entry, and you're going to write it from the perspective of Fantastic Mr. Fox. So everybody, put in your head that you are Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. Really think about and talk to your grown-ups about how you think Fantastic Mr. Fox is feeling at this point. So think about the things that's happened to him. He has tried to get some food, but his tail has been shot off. Then he's been woken up in the night by these um, shovels trying to dig them out. They've dug and they've dug and they've dug and they've dug and they're getting really tired. Okay, then they've stopped and they think that they're okay, but then there comes me mechanical shovels. Okay, so they're still going. So I'll give you an example. Now, because Mr. Fox is feeling, he's really not feeling very good. I've started my diary entry by saying, Dear Diary, what a terrible few days I've had. So I'm saying that I've had a really terrible time recently. It all began when those beastly farmers decided to try and stop me from stealing their birds. 
The evil, stupid goons were lying in wait for me by the entrance of my hole with their shotguns at the ready. The horrible brute shot at me as soon as I poked my head out, and they shot off my beautiful long tail. I was absolutely devastated and in frightful pain. It didn't stop there. They went home and got their terrifying tractors and began to dig up our lovely home. That's just an example of what the diary entry could look like. Okay, now remember you're writing in the past tense because a diary entry is always something that's happened in the past. So you're writing about what's happened in the past. Make sure that you include capital letters and full stops and don't forget that editing. Check that you've met in case you've missed any words. And once you've finished your writing, go back through and see how you could improve it, how you could make it better. Whether you could put in some adjectives, whether you put in some adverbs about how the foxes were digging or what, how, um, the, uh, yeah, how they're doing the things that they are doing. Okay, off you go.